good afternoon to each and everyone present over here. Uh, so directly I'm coming to my topic and uh, this is basically a case study, not a research paper because uh, whenever I have started using this DPAC model in English language, basically I'm a mathematics teacher but I am teaching English since last three years because the post is vacant at my school so I have to take the English language as an additional subject because we are a, mod we are a model school and uh, we have a uh, we have all the teachers for each subject, but by the way, the madam is transferred, so I have I am teaching English since last three years. So my topic of my case study is applying TPAP model in English language teaching at primary level. So first of all, what about the TPAP model? What is the TPAP model? Because uh, there are a lot of teachers over here from the elementary education, my colleagues, and the DLL students. Whenever we are using ICT in teaching, ICT in any type of teaching, not only in English but in any of the subjects, then we must have to compulsorily study this TPAP model whenever we are using ICT. Right. So why ICT is required, we everybody know. Because nowadays ICT is very important, especially after the corona pandemic, the usability of information and communication technology has become very, very essential. Otherwise, we can't teach students because in the corona time, we couldn't connect with the students through the offline mediums. So, we switched to the online mode through synchronous and asynchronous type of technologies, but still we don't know how to use technology, where to use technology and when to use technology and that is defined inside the TPAC model. Next slide, ma'am. So, what is this TPAC? This TPAC is developed by Mr. and Polar at Michigan State University in the year 2006 and the refined version has been elaborated in 2009 also. So what is this TPAC is basically? This TPAC is basically the amalgamation of three things. Technology, pedagogy and content. Means, for example, I am basically from the technology background. I am PhD in computer science. So for example, if I know each and everything about the technology, each aspect of technology, but if I don't know about the pedagogy and content, then I will not be able to deliver it to the students perfectly. For example, if we talk, if we talk about the language teaching, then we must know how to teach the students specific the language. Means what is the pedagogy? We must know the pedagogy. That how to teach the students. I am from the technology background. I don't know how to teach language. How to teach mathematics. How to teach any of the subject until I don't know about the pedagogy of that particular subject. And we know that in primary school teaching, we have to teach everything. We have to teach language, we have to teach mathematics, we have to teach science, everything we have to teach. Right? So we must know the pedagogy, content. We must know the content, but we are teaching. For example, we are teaching LCM and HCF. We must know how to teach LCM. How, how to teach HCF. Until we don't know that thing, we are unable to, we know pedagogy, we know technology, but we don't know the content knowledge, we can't teach. We are teaching, but we can't teach perfectly. With the purification, with the perfection, we can't teach. So we must know each and everything. Technology, technological knowledge we should have, pedagogical knowledge we should have, and content knowledge we should have. So especially in this research paper or in this case study, what we do, what we did is <clears throat> first we went with the normal lesson plans without technology. Means normal lesson plans, whatever we have in books, we directly interacted with the students and come up with some evaluation techniques and introduce that evaluation in the classroom in the test, the test paper and take took the results. So this is the problem behind actually what is happening in the teaching scenario right nowadays because people with a, people are nowadays with a lot of e-content. We have e-content. We are just picking it from the web and sending it sending it to the students through WhatsApp. We don't know how to use it. And is the, is the knowledge happening? Is the learning actually happening? We don't know. Is the learning outcome achieving or achievable? No, we don't know. Just we are having the link, we are sending it to the students and our job is done. This is happening and this is the actual problem with the technology. Next slide. So these are the basic two objectives <coughs> which I have Object in my case study the English language learning of students before and after implementation of TPAC model, and another one is effectiveness, effectiveness of ICT applications. Only I have took YouTube videos for this particular study, only YouTube videos. 
next one now. So these are the six learning outcomes which I have, which we have adopted for this case study. So these are the learning outcomes for first and second grade as adopted by the NCRT. These are defined by the NCRT, nothing from our side. So associates words with pictures, recognizes letters and their sounds, and so on and so forth. Next one. So <clears throat> before applying this feedback model, before applying these YouTube videos, we have tested the knowledge of the students through a test paper. So these are the results. Whenever we have interacted with the students with this particular learning outcome that are they able to associate words with the pictures? So out of the 35 students, 5 were correct only. 7 were partially correct and 23 were wrong. And like that. So these are the results. Next one. After the feedback implementation with the same sort of problem, same sort of questions associated with the associating words with the pictures, 16 students were able to answer that particular question. So the learning level increased. So <clears throat> this is for the graph. In the particular learning outcome one, the learning of the students raised from 14.3% to 45.7%. In the second one, 11.4% to 48.6% and likewise. So this is our outcome, this was our conclusion next one. So this was our conclusion that whenever we are using technology, we must integrate the technology very carefully. If required, if not required, don't use it. This should be our goal and whenever we are creating our lesson plans, especially this is my suggestions to my colleagues, dear students, because you are the future teachers. So whenever you are practicing the 60s based lesson plans, you adopt technology. For example, you are using YouTube videos. For example, you are using any switch. So use only whenever required, not forcefully. For example, your mentor is saying that you use technology. Don't use it until it is not required. If required, use it. So it should be tightly integrated with your lesson plan. Right? So this is the basic suggestion I have. And because I closely work with the teacher trainings also, so this is my suggestion for each and every one, my dear <coughs> colleagues also, the teachers. So whenever we are using technology, use it carefully. If you are using YouTube videos, then use it carefully. Very carefully. If it is required, if it is not required, don't use it. So that is all from my side. Thank you.